captive. Listen, most of the people in this world, most of the people around us, and most of the people that uh, would listen and see this, many, many people, you know people that are captive to the sin and the devil. He's the ruler of their life. Uh, through the world, through all the, uh, the humanism, the stuff that yes says, oh, you're your own God. You just do whatever you want. Uh, no, that's, that's all wrong. That's uh, not right. And so the opening, he, uh, liberty to the captives. Have you had liberty? Have you been set free? Uh, we have that uh, John 8, 36 in the bulletin. If the Lord therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Are you free indeed today? Are you still in the bondage of sin and wickedness that has held you until you trusted Jesus Christ? All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so we see that the Lord Jesus Christ, what he came for, what did Jesus Christ come for? Well, we just read it, the prophecy of why he came. Uh, now there is a more coming to it, uh, the rest of it is the day of the vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion to give them the beauty for ashes and the oil. Uh, listen, all that's still coming, but it hasn't come yet. And there's going to be seven years of tribulation, time of Jacob's trouble, uh, where these people are going to stand accountable uh, for all of the sin and wickedness that they've been promoting through the Talmud, through their religious ceremonies, their uh, re rejection of God. It's coming yet. Uh, yes, Israel. Uh, we have the church of God today during the times of the Gentiles, but Israel is still God's people. And he will take care of them and he will judge them because they have seven years yet that they have to be under his uh, trials and tribulations. Because that wasn't yet, uh, if, if we go back and see the, the full captivity and what was supposed to be done, there's still seven years missing on the end of that. And that's what's yet to come for them, not for the church of God, not for you or me. Listen, in the church of God today, there is no Gentile. You're not a Gentile anymore, you know that? You're not a Jew anymore. You know that? There's neither Jew nor Gentile. They're not circumcised or uncircumcised. Makes no difference, has nothing to do with salvation in Jesus Christ. And in the church of God, the church of God is an entity that only came about with the death of the testator, Jesus Christ himself. And so that's when the church of this age started. It wasn't forever. This church was never here back in the Old Testament with Adam and Eve and with Noah and with Abraham and all this. The church of God wasn't here. God was dealing directly with his people, the Jews. So we see that. God will set you free through Jesus Christ. And he'll give you the Holy Spirit to take you all the way through. Uh, so he came to set us at liberty. Look at, uh, let's go to, yeah, let's go to John 8. John 8. What verses we have? John 8 is so, such a long chapter and so loaded with so many good things that it's really something to be able to uh, see uh, what we have here. In John chapter 8, uh, let's begin in verse 30. As he spake these words, many believed on him. Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, if ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. You want to be a disciple indeed of him? Uh, he had disciples, but they didn't all stick with him, did they? Uh, you want to be a disciple indeed, then continue in his word. Verse 32, ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. How do you get freed? By the truth. The truth of God is in his word. His word is truth. We saw that last hour. And so we see again that the word is true, and the truth shall make you free. God's word will free you. Just believe on the Lord Jesus Christ like his word says. Repent 
that you can't do it. You have nothing good in yourself. You can't pay for it. You can't buy it. And there's nothing you can do. You can't take sacraments. You can't do any of these other things. You don't have to be baptized for it. Baptism just gets you wet if you're not saved. <laughs> but you can uh, take the salvation that you have through Jesus Christ being reconciled to the Father and being part of his kingdom and joining heirs with Jesus Christ, uh, you can take that and then of course you follow in believer's baptism to identify with your decision to trust Jesus Christ and live for him. One time, one time that baptism, and that's after you have believed, repented and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, so the truth shall make you free. You'll know it, it'll make you free. Verse 33, they answered him, we be Abraham's seed and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, you shall be made free? Well, they're uh, just in the flesh, okay? They don't realize they're gonna have to do something spiritual here. Uh, so verse 34, Jesus answered them, verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. So are you a servant of sin or are you a servant of God? Uh, do you do spiritual things and right things or do you do wickedness? Is that your des desire? Are you still a servant of sin? Or are you now an ambassador of Jesus Christ for the kingdom of God? And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, Ye shall be free indeed. Glory to God. Amen. Are you free indeed? I don't trust you're free indeed. If you're not, if you're wondering, oh man, what's all this about? Then repent and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved as God says in his word. It's truth. Take him at his word. That's what he wants you to do. All these people that reject, well, I don't like that. This part really shouldn't be in the Bible. I want to change that. No, I, uh, did God really make this? Or didn't it take billions of years? No, it didn't take billions of years. God created it. And there were two people that he made in his image, not animals. He made them male and female people that are of the blood of the one race of humankind. And you're a descendant of those two. And somewhere you come through Noah and his wife too. <laughs> and either Shem, Ham, or Japheth. One blood all the way through. One race. Don't try to split things up and just cause problems and get people stirred up. Uh, take God at his word and you'll be a lot better off, okay? <clears throat> the truth will set you free. Amen. Um, second, well, <laughs> where do we go? Look at 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians 10. This may work, work in here, let's see. 2 Corinthians 10. Uh, we looked at this last hour uh, again. Let's just for we walk in the flesh. We do not war after the flesh. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down a stronghold, uh, casting down imaginations, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Uh, that's what we need to think about bringing in every thought to the obedience of Christ. Uh, we've been set at liberty, liberty to do right, to follow Jesus Christ, to be free from the bondage of sin and the devil. Don't let the devil, the world, uh, uh, sin encase you and keep you from living the life of joy and peace and love from God our Father. Can you say that, that you are, God is your father? I know many people do that on false pretense because they said they, they've done all these rituals and they've done this and that and everything else and they don't even know who the father is, uh, but they still believe it. Uh, 
Believe God. Take him at his word. Um, let's see. Galatians. Let's go to Galatians 2. Okay. Galatians 2. Christ set you free. Look at verse 3 there. Uh, but neither Titus, who was with me being a Greek, was compelled to be circumcised. Um, and that because of false brethren uh, unawares brought in, who came in privily to spy out our liberty, which we have in Christ Jesus, that they might bring us into bondage. Uh, Christ Jesus set the Jews free from the bondage of circumcision. Uh, they no longer had to be circumcised. They needed to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. And so he's uh, teaching them here. Uh, Titus was with him, uh, but he was a Greek, and he didn't have to be circumcised to know the same God that the Jews knew then. And they all came together in the church of God at this time uh, now in the New Testament after Jesus Christ died and rose again. Uh, so in Galatians, uh, uh, look at verse 5. To whom we gave place by subjection, no, not for an hour, that the truth of the gospel might continue with you. We didn't go into all this nonsense of the world. Uh, we just went on with the gospel. The truth of the gospel, that's what you need. You need to believe it. <clears throat> that's in uh, Galatians chapter uh, 2, verse 3 and 5 there, 3 to 5 there. Look at chapter 5 of Galatians, chapter 5. <clears throat> Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. You talk about freedom, about Christ setting you free. Uh, Paul's admonishing the people of Galatia, uh, Galatia there to uh, stand in the liberty which Christ has given you. Uh, don't go into the bondage of you got to do this, you got to do that, you got to do and so forth. Uh, that's not what it's all about. It's about being set free from all that stuff. Uh, you don't have to follow the Talmud or the Koran, okay? Uh, be set free from it. Believe God, take him at his word, and get rid of all that nonsense, all this following men's writings. Uh, that's what the Jews and the Muslims are all in bond in, in bounds to, in, in bond to, uh, all that kind of stuff. They're following what their leaders over the years have written, not what God says. And we have other religions around the country in just the same way, following the, the religion that they've set up, some man has set up, whether it was Joseph Smith and the Mormons or whatever, the JWs, the, uh, the, the Roman Catholic Church, I mean, all the way back, you can follow them clear back into the uh, Old Testament era, but following their sacramental go, uh, stuff that it's not of the Bible, okay? I can remember many different people saying, uh, well, I took mom's Catholic Bible and we talked about some things and she said, well, I just can't, you know, that's not in the Bible. You know, oh, she, Mary, Mary had children? Oh no, that's not in the Bible. And you show them, they go, oh, that, that shouldn't be in the Bible. <laughs> I mean, how ridiculous. Take God at his word. You can take a Roman Catholic Bible and show them how to be saved and what not to do that they're doing. Uh, and it's, it goes on with all the different religion things that are going on today. The big split in the, and why are we having splits in churches? Well, first of all, denominationalism isn't the thing that God ever set up. There is no denomination in the Bible. There's no Baptist churches listed in the Bible. There's no denominations. It's a meeting house for the church of God in that place, and that's the way it should be. But we see that the things have been gotten so out of hand. So what happened? You have, we have, well, we went through a split in the Lutheran church way back and when we were first married and the uh, Methodist church now, I mean, they split, they've lost uh, hundreds and hundreds of churches have just pulled out because of this stand against God, the stand that they're taking against God uh, because of the male and female, there's only two genders, two, two sexes that God made, okay? 
Uh, and so that should split people. But why should a church be pulling out because of stuff like that? Why should people have to leave because of the apostasy in the churches of America and around the world today? Because of the not following God's word, not taking him at his word. Uh, that's why. Uh, that's it. But it's wickedness. It's of the devil. He's the one that gets all this stirred up and splits people up with all these different things. Uh, so anyway, back in Galatians 5 there. <clears throat> so stand. Uh, in the, stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Um, you can go, we can go into that. And, I mean, these are, this chapter has a number of messages in it we could preach, but let's try not to preach it right now. Uh, and so, behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. Uh, what does circumcision have to do with Jesus Christ? Nothing in the New Testament church. You're neither Jew nor Gentile. Uh, you, it has nothing at all to do with your salvation. And so you see that also when they went in and had their council in Jerusalem, well, what should the Gentiles, what should we make them believe? Well, they just went back to the Old Testament. Okay, don't, don't commit fornication. Don't eat, don't eat blood. Okay, and that's what they, they confirmed. They said, the rest of this stuff is just stuff. It's just things, okay? So we're not going to put them in bondage uh, like uh, Satan wants you to be in. Uh, you're set free. Uh, all these things. Do what God wants you to do. Be where God wants you to be. That's the whole life story that you need. Whatever it is that he wants you to do, do it. If, listen, if this was what you wanted, God wanted you to do yesterday and last week, and he hasn't changed his mind, then do it again tomorrow. Do it again uh, in a week. Do it again until God shows you something different you're supposed to be doing. And so just keep on going for him. Uh, uh, so this goes into, we won't go through all this, but it goes into the circumcision and how uh, Christ is of no effect if you're going to say, well, I've got to be baptized. I've got to be circumcised. Well, I've got to do this. I've got to, if I don't take communion, I can't get saved. I can't be saved. No, I see, if I'm not, these are all things things some of them are good things and we should uh, because we're saved we will do the works of God that he wants us to do uh, but we don't do works to get saved you can't do that because then you think you're doing something and your pride will keep you from ever knowing Jesus Christ so again through the spirit it talks about here uh, the Holy Spirit that's given to us. He's the down payment. Uh, and so there's no circumcision. There's no thing there. Uh, you know, we've been set at liberty uh, from foods and things like that, from the, the dictates of that. Uh, God told, uh, in Genesis 9 there, he told, yes, uh, who was that? Must have been about Noah's time. And he said, oh, all these things are for you to eat now. No, it's not. We don't have to do that when they, after they got off the ark. Uh, so you can have these things. Well, obviously some foods, uh, we're, some of us are allergic to some foods. Some of us can't eat bad things. Uh, don't eat poison foods, okay? Uh, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about uh, just uh, whatever God provides. Uh, don't be too quick to say, no, we can't have that. Well, God hasn't forbidden it. God has said to use it for his glory. And he tells us even how to do that. He tells us, uh, uh, don't judge another for his liberty when it comes to foods, 1 Corinthians uh, 8 and, and 10. Uh, so there's different, different things like that. We have to be careful that we don't think that uh, we have to do these things or we have to not do these things. Listen, if you do something, the Bible says, uh, do it unto the Lord. And if you don't do that same thing, don't do it unto the Lord. You got it? And so there are things that we are free to do. We're not in bondage. We don't have to follow Old Testament rules. I mean, we, when the, the folks were here uh, visiting a couple weeks ago and the preacher was here and all, you know, well, well, we can't have food in the sanctuary. I just was raised that way and I don't want to have any food in the sanctuary. I said, this isn't the sanctuary, I'm the sanctuary. You're the sanctuary if you don't know Jesus Christ. Uh, the church 
is the sanctuary, it's the people, okay? Uh, this is the meeting house. Uh, so they would take their family, they'd have to get their cookies and then go in the back room and eat it because that wasn't the sanctuary. So you, you see how we get ourselves locked into these rules? I mean, uh, the gentleman talked to me and said, well, that's just, I was always raised that way, so it's just something set, that's my way of saying Because uh, I, I told him what the Bible said about following the Old Testament rules and all, all this stuff and who the, who the church is today. Uh, well, whatever, I mean, you can make up your own decision that I'm not gonna uh, judge you. If you don't wanna do something, don't do it. But don't tell me I can't do it, if God says I can, okay? So we have these things, uh, circumcision, uh, the uh, thing about uh, foods, uh, <clears throat> our liberty, he talks about, uh, Paul talks about the liberty uh, that he has, and so he's judged for his liberty uh, in these areas. First um, uh, Timothy 4, First Timothy 4. And First Timothy 4 here, just uh, <clears throat> the beginning part of that. 1 Timothy 4, now this, verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And listen, we have doctrines of devils and seducing spirits all around us uh, in this world today. It's a wicked place. Um, and they speak lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. Uh, we know people like that that are totally given to hypocrisy in their own life and you point out the hypocrisy and they just get mad and upset at you and you're trying to help them with God's word and they won't listen to God's word. Uh, such things as forbidding to marry and commanding to abstain from meats uh, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving for them which believe and know the truth. Uh, so are these meats, uh, these things, are you supposed to uh, say have this category and that category and stuff? No, you do what is good for your own body, okay? Uh, these, all these different diets and stuff. Listen, just uh, follow what the Lord wants. Eat what he's produced and what he's made uh, without all the extra stuff added and all the stuff that the world goes through to addict you to everything with their, uh, sugar's a big one. We, I mean, we talk about that. We know that. Uh, so just stay away from it. Uh, for every creature of God is good, verse 4, and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Um, where is your thankfulness to God? Don't forget the thanksgiving. Uh, when you receive something, uh, let it come thankfully. For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. Uh, now this goes on through all these things uh, here and we're not going to read the whole thing, but uh, anyway, you, you get the picture of what's going on here. Uh, so don't judge on these food issues. Uh, that was in, well, let's see. I'm just going to look back here again in Genesis 9. Oh, in Genesis 9, let's see, verse 9 says, And I, behold, I establish my covenant with you and with your seed after you, and every living creature that is with you of the fowl, of the cattle, of every beast of the earth, of every beast of the earth with you from all that go out of the ark to every beast of the earth. Uh, listen, that's given for me. Uh, I will establish my covenant with you, neither shall all flesh be cut off. And he says he's not going to do that again. Uh, <clears throat> the only thing, like in verse 4, it says, The flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat, in verse 4. Uh, but before that he says, Every moving, every moving thing, verse 3, that liveth shall be meat for you. Even as the green herb have I given you all things. Uh, so uh, that has come about. Now talking about, you see the difference in dispensations? Before Noah, God had forbidden certain things. Uh, before 
uh, well, under Adam, he had a different scenario with Adam and Eve in the garden. And then when uh, Satan tempted and, and uh, Eve was deceived and, and uh, Adam took of the fruit also uh, for his dear wife that he followed <laughs> and was with, uh, you see these things in uh, a different time frame. God dealt with them differently. He had different standards for them. When the children of Israel were out in the wilderness wandering, he had different food standards, different things for them that they had to do for 40 years. Uh, and so be careful and realize there are different divisions. We're in the Gentiles age uh, where of the church of God now. And when the time of the Gentiles become in, uh, then God goes back to finishing the prophecies that are unfulfilled on his people uh, from the prophets. Uh, the, the prophets did not have the sight of the church age of this time of searching of uh, times of the Gentiles, okay? And so you need to understand that when you read the Old Testament prophets, uh, this was a gap period of 2,000 years uh, that they didn't see. And they didn't know about, even though they prophesied about the coming regeneration of Israel, about the, uh, the uh, time of trouble, of the time, the seven years tribulation, this stuff, it's still coming to them, to the, gen to the Jews, to the Jews, not to the church of God and the Gentiles that will be here then. Uh, they will also be able to see God and see God come down and plead with them and uh, be saved if, during, the reverend, during the tribulation time. You know, praise God, his long suffering, his mercies endure forever. It's just a time that uh, things are going to get really rough. So uh, James... James chapter 1. <clears throat> James chapter 1, look down there at uh, verse 22. But if ye, but be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Listen, if you uh, hear the word and don't do it, you're deceiving your own selves. We have a lot of that today. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. For behold, he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. He forgot what he's looking at. But whoso looketh unto the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein, he being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed. You want to be blessed in your deeds and uh, follow along with the work that God has for you to do and be a faithful hearer and a doer, okay, of what God wants for you. Now, you're not under the law for salvation, by the way. Uh, you've been set free from the law. You've been set free from all this bondage. And so you just go on and serve the Lord with gladness and joy. I'm thankful that he can use you for his glory. Uh, <clears throat> Second Corinthians 3. Second Corinthians 3. There at the end of the chapter, verse 17. Now the Lord is that spirit. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Do you have the Holy Spirit within you? Isn't that what God said he, he gave us when we believed on the Lord Jesus Christ? It says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Uh, you have the right to do right. You're free from the law. You can serve him with liberty. Verse 18, but we all with open face beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. And so you're going to be just used for the glory of God and the Spirit of, of God that he's given you uh, for his glory. Uh, 1 Peter, 
look at a couple places here and, and wrap it up. First Peter, well you look at some of these little epistles here in the back of the Bible and you think you lost them from your Bible and you're trying to find them sometimes. First Peter chapter 2, <clears throat> Uh, verse 11 there, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. There is the problem. Uh, flesh and soul, flesh and spirit, warring against one another. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works which they shall behold glorify God in the day of visitation. And so we need to submit ourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake, whether it be to the king as supreme or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers and for the praise of them that do well. Uh, see, we have governors and we have uh, people in control that don't know what God says and they won't abide by what God says because they're supposed to be, these people are supposed to be sent by God for the punishment of evildoers and the praise of them that do well. Aren't things turned upside down and topsy-turvy today? And so we have praise and turn criminals loose and let them do more crim criminal things. Uh, and then the, the good people are being arrested for uh, saying that God made them male and female and stuff like that. And so we see how ridiculous things are. Uh, but government was made for the praise of them that do well. Uh, for so is the will of God that with well-doing you may put to silence the ignorance of foolish men as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as the servants of God. Uh, we have the freedom to do right and to serve God. And that we don't have to be afraid of being uh, tied up in all these things of wickedness in the world. And so we just continue on. Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Look at 2 Peter 2. <clears throat> 2 Peter 2, verse 18. For while they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. Uh, listen, you escape those things from air and you get, uh, have freedom in Jesus Christ and yet people, the devil and people will try to drag you back into bondage and they do it to a lot of Christians so that your testimony is at stake and you are no longer even known to be a servant of God. Uh, be careful of those people that are out there, the false prophets, the false professors. Verse 19, while they promise them liberty, Old people come and say, oh, if you just didn't have all this bondage that you're carrying, if you just didn't uh, lock your church doors, I mean, things like that that are so ridiculous. Uh, listen, uh, we're trying to help people not be thieves and not be a, a people that would like to prey on others that are ignorant of these things. Uh, God, yes, God takes care of us and we trust him, but we don't tempt God, okay? Uh, Jesus Christ even said that when he was tempted of the devil. Uh, so again, in 2 um, Peter chapter 2 here, and uh, let's see, verse 